I don't go to the media or the tabloids and I don't Google shit to find out what it is. You are taught that you are the elite of the world. I've had professionals, the so-called professionals, suggest I had diseases and labeled me ADD, ADHD, OCD. I went to accounting. I spent five years to get an accounting degree. I learned more in this little course, little course pack this big than I learned in five years of college. What's up, my fellow small business supporters? Savvy here, and today I am doing an awesome video collab that I've been so excited to do for a long time. Today I am here with Taylor from the channel The Antibot. Uh, if you guys haven't already checked out her channel, which a lot of you probably have, but either way, I've linked it in the description below. I mentioned her channel in the video I did doing shout outs to some anti MLM channels. But Taylor, how about you tell everyone about your channel in case uh, there's some new people? <laughs> well, first off, before I get into that, today is a really good day for us to collab because I just got this in the mail today. <laughs> Yeah, so I was like freaking out, like literally like an hour ago, I checked the mail, well actually Drew checked the mail, and he got this in the mail for me, so I was like, oh, that's like so perfect that I got this today. <laughs> that is so exciting. Oh my god, I really hope you like it. Yeah, I'm excited to read it. I am the anti-bot, my channel is the anti-bot on YouTube, I've been around for two-ish months, so not very long, but I only talk about MLM topics and kind of diving into, you know, the techniques and tactics that MLMs use to target people, specifically women and minorities. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's my channel. <laughs> okay. And your channel has grown explosively. I am like in awe of your channel. <laughs> well, that, I mean, I have to thank Drew a lot for that because, you know, I, I had been working for anyone that doesn't know, Drew is my husband. He runs Genetically Modified Skeptic. And I had been working with him on his MLM videos for a while. So when I finally started my own channel, um, he was able to give me a shout out and that really helped. Yeah, okay, funny story. I've told you this story, but I haven't told the audience this story. So Taylor's husband, Drew, he runs the channel Genetically Modified Skeptic. I love his channel. And I was a, a fan of his channel for like the past two years. And like, I didn't realize you two were married at first. So I was just like, oh, this is cool. There's a collab between two YouTubers I really like. Yeah. And you guys were like, our life is a collab. And I was like, wait, oh my God, yeah. even better than I thought. So today in this video, we are going to be talking a little bit about Scientology and how it relates to the multi-level marketing world and the business guru world. So this is like a two-part collaboration on the Antibots channel, which again, I've linked in the description below. We're going to have her video about this. And so we have her half of the collab on her channel. So in that one, she's going to be kind of going over like an in-depth dissection and breakdown of how Scientology works and how it relates to MLMs. And I'm going to be in there talking about like business gurus and Grant Cardone, my <laughs> favorite boss bro <laughs> that works and all that um so i and in this one we're just gonna have like more of a casual conversation about it this video has been a long time coming because a lot of people whenever i've made a video about grant cardone in the past everybody pops in my comment section like what are you gonna do a video on how he's a scientologist and i was like i need to do this video so i was watching some interviews that he did about his life as a scientologist and i was um he was talking about like how he was a drug addict when he was 25. When he got out of rehab, he originally found, like, he went to his friend's office and found the Dianetics book and read that and decided that this mm -hmm. was going to inspire him to never be a drug addict again. Oh, and then when he was, like, 40 or something, he met this top, I think, like, a stock trader, investor guy who was, like, a billionaire. So he met that guy and that guy was a Scientologist and he's like, well, if it works for this guy and he's really rich, it must work for me too. So then he became a Scientologist. In a lot of my past videos, I've talked about how he rejects psychology, he rejects like mental illness and that kind of thing. I guess, what are some of your thoughts on all of that? Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely interesting. And this is kind of a trend that I've noticed with a lot of like leaders in the MLM industry actually a lot of them have some roots in Scientology. Either they were in Scientology or 
they kind of took notes from Scientology and applied that to the MLMs they founded. So the one that like comes to my mind is Keith Rainier, who oh, uh, yeah. founded Nexium, the big that dude's so scary. MLM. That dude, yeah, he's in jail, thankfully, but yeah, he's yes. super scary. <laughs> but um, he kind of studied Scientology and took notes from it and applied it to Nexium, the MLM that he founded. And so I think that there's actually a lot of overlap between mm -hmm. Scientology and MLMs. Like they use very similar tactics to draw people in. And it's kind of interesting because I feel like Scientology is a religion, like masquerades as a religion, but really it's a business. Mm -hmm. And MLMs are masquerading as businesses, but they're really religions. They're really like selling you the lifestyle and you know, all the dogma that comes with that. So yeah, those are kind of my thoughts on it. That's super interesting. And I guess, do you think Scientology is a cult? Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. It, yeah, like if we compare it to the bite model, it fits every single yeah. item that's on the bite model. So definitely. I think a big thing I was noticing with Scientology and with MLMs both is the financial control element. Mm. The yeah. idea that you you the more you pay into it the more respected you will be yeah in in this group so eventually they have a financial hold on you right yeah and it's like this it all is kind of tied to this ranking system so in scientology it's ot1 i don't even know what the highest like ot operating thetan level is um, but in scientology you have that and in mlms you have various levels as you work your way up and people that are in, in MLMs and, Scientology, and in Scientology like to act like they, they've they worked towards that rank or it's something that, I mean, they kind of have worked towards that, that rank, but it's more like the amount of money that they have invested into the group is really where the rank is coming from. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily like anything that they have accomplished, but it's how much money they have given to the group, either through themselves or through their downlines in the case of MLMs. I remember reading about that on the website Pink Truth when reading about Mary Kay and how people who wanted to, who were a lot of people who had a high ranking also had like inventory filling up their entire garage that they hadn't sold because the ranking, theoretically the people at the top will tell you the rankings based on how much you sell, but as long as you bought the product, they don't know who, what customer ended up with it in the end. You still yeah. get the rank just if you ordered the inventory and have the auto ship going and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And how the law is laid out right now with MLMs, there's no distinction between like what, like if it's a personal purchase for the rep itself or it's for like an actual sale they made, there is no like distinction between those two things. Basically they're both considered like retail sales, but in many cases they're actual just they're actually just purchases made by the reps they're not mm -hmm. really selling them to any outside pe people yeah when it comes to because i know you've done a lot of interesting research on the bite model and i love the videos you've made on your channel that have to do with the bite model what what elements of the bite model have you seen in both mlms and in scientology so the big one that comes to mind right now is um the insider versus outsider groups mm -hmm. yeah so in scientology anyone that speaks out against scientology or leaves scientology or if scientology doesn't work for that person they're labeled as suppressives and basically anything they say that's against the group is considered slanderous or they're they're demonized basically and anything they say isn't truthful and I think that's really similar to MLMs in that, like, if some if MLM didn't work for someone or if someone, you know, in my case, if I speak out against MLMs, it's just because, like, I, I tried MLMs and it didn't work for me and now I'm just bitter because, you know, mm -hmm. I couldn't make any sales or I'm just a hater and I'm just hating on women that are being empowered. <laughs> <laughs> so it's anyone that speaks out against Scientology or MLMs is automatically a hater they don't have anything good like they, nothing they say can be believed it's 
they're just saying it out of a place of hate, which, you know, obviously isn't true. Like mm -hmm. both you and I, like why we do what we do is because we want to prevent people from getting involved with these kind of things. Exactly, yeah. Help women, <laughs> not destroy them. Yeah. Okay. Just the other day I got in a YouTube comment argument with someone and now I can't find the comment thread. So I don't know if they deleted it or what, but someone was saying I was misogynistic because I criticize Rachel Hollis so much. And I was like, no, okay. Criticizing another woman does not make me misogynistic. In which yeah. case you're being misogynistic right now in that case by your logic, because you're criticizing me. And they yeah. were like, well, why don't you criticize men who do the same things? And I was like, literally grant cardone tony <laughs> robbins i'm harder on them than on rachel because yeah. i think they're worse people um yeah so i was like what as uh, so the idea though that right like if they try to indoctrinate you with like this is women empowerment if you criticize this clearly you just want to hurt women or it's like no yeah. i i want to help other women get yeah. involved in like you know actual small business ownership right. even i mean that's hard too it's not and there's no such thing as making money easily. I hate the phrase passive income. Like I know like in terms of investments, passive income can be a thing, but for yeah. the most part, like pa like income is not going to be passive and uh, chasing that idea yeah. I think is a waste of time. Yeah, it's only like special circumstances where someone will actually be able to get that. I mean, you just, it, I don't want to say that you just have to like be lucky, but some of it is you kind of have to be lucky. Yeah. But the reality of owning a small business is that you're always going to be, I don't know what the word is, but you're always going to be like pushing for the next thing. You're always going to be working hard to the, towards the next goal. It's not always, it's not going to be easy all the time. I mean, even for like Drew's channel, like even though it's a larger channel, we're still constantly having to work on things with that and there's highs and lows with that, you know? So yeah, <laughs> that idea of just being like, able to sit back and just get passive income for doing very little is just totally a bogus idea. I mean, maybe if you bought stock in a company before it exploded, yeah. you can get passive income, but other yeah. than that. All right, so I watched this video earlier today called Grant Cardone, Becoming a Scientologist is the secret to my success. Mm. So sounds I, great. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just excited some already. <laughs> background information for everyone who doesn't know much about Grant Cardone. I have linked a playlist up in the cards where I have a whole playlist called Grant Cardone Exposed. And in that playlist, we talk about Grant Cardone, who is, you know, started out as a real estate guy, he, or he started out as a used car salesman, which surprises no one. So he was a used car salesman and then he became a real estate investor. He bought properties and all of that um, and got really rich. Good for him. Um, but he also has, he's founded the 10X rule, which is like, always make your goal 10 times bigger than what your goal needs to be. He's always pushing for like, never settle for less. It's a very like extremist mindset. He does big conferences. He talks to multi-level marketing groups. He's um, spoken to WFG World Financial Group, which I also believe is a cult. He has done a lot of that kind of thing. And I reviewed one of his books on my channel called Be Obsessed or Be Average. And in that book, he kind of let a lot of his weirdness show through where he was like, at the very beginning, he's like, I've had so many people tell me that my level of obsession is bad. I've been told by that I have ADD. I've been told I have OCD. I've been told these things by professionals. And I'm like, well, if they're professionals and they're diagnosing you, maybe you should listen. <laughs> yeah, like, maybe I have listen to them. <laughs> I have OCD and I take medication for it and it makes my life better. I'm not a less successful business owner because of it. Yeah. So he's just like not listening. And then he talks about like, how how he like he just disregards their advice and then later i found out that like scientology doesn't believe in the the in modern psychology at all like mm -hmm. it rejects that and that was something i didn't know yeah. i'm like whoa so scientology actually is at odds with like the mental health field yeah and as i kind of understand it like scientology initially wasn't even supposed to be a religion it was mm -hmm. supposed to be like 
basically an, basically an opposition to psychology and it was supposed to be like its own science and it, in its own right mm -hmm. but then I, I can't remember exactly who L. Ron Hubbard was speaking to but he like counseled with someone and mm -hmm. basically the dude was like oh if you want to make a lot of money <laughs> then you need to turn this into a religion and so that's <laughs> kind of how it became a religion it wasn't ever intended to be like that but it's kind of morphed into that because if you sell people religion you'll make more money <laughs> well, that sounds like pretty much exactly what a cult is so yeah so i guess that's a big part of why you know why if you read grant cardone's books he is not going to be mental health positive at all he's going to be like you have you think you have ocd cool use that obsession to fuel your business oh don't gosh, talk to a doctor uh... like no that's the yeah. worst that's the best thing i ever learned when i was because when I was first, one, discovering I had a mental illness, and two, going into a creative field, was professors who said, you know, there will be stories out there of, you know, the great writers of, of our time, or the great artists, or the most successful people, and they will, like, be romanticized that they were so tortured or depressed, or it will be romanticized that they were alcoholics or drug addicts or whatever, and they were not successful because of that they had to overcome that to reach success right. so never think that that is going to help you be successful yeah that was good advice because when i was you know a 20 year old college hipster who had like didn't seek treatment for my ocd and all of that i was like oh i could just use this range of emotions to capture something in my writing and in reality, I was just living a miserable existence. So I, <laughs> like, I feel like that's like one of the, one of the major problems I feel like with this kind of thing is the idea yeah. that like, you're supposed to reject mental health. You're supposed to reject psychology. Yeah. And I think that's like a really interesting point. Cause I'm kind of on the same page with you. Like whenever anyone starts bashing psychology or getting actual counseling from a licensed physician, mm -hmm. for me, I have a really big problem with that too, because I am, I go to counseling every single week. I mm -hmm. have extreme, well, not extreme, but pretty bad, like social anxiety and just anxiety in general. Mm -hmm. So like when anyone starts saying that, like any, all of that is just, you know, bunk that I have a problem with that mm. because I'm like, what you're doing is actively hurting people because instead of people actually seeking help that's been scientifically proven, people are going to Grant Cardone and thinking that he has all the answers or joining an MLM because they think that will help them or using oils because they think that will help them. So yeah, I have a problem with that too. A major problem. Oh yeah. That's always one of my biggest things is when the, like when oils or when any MLM that's based in pseudoscience comes out here and is like, look, I didn't need to take my antidepressant anymore because I just inhaled so much peppermint oil. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's how it works at all. Yeah. I don't think at best it might be a placebo you might sure. feel like it helps and I think that there is like some room for like aromatherapy oh sure a little bit yeah, like because like the the sense of smell connects to the brain and you know mental health is rooted in the brain yeah so I can definitely see how it could help you feel better in the short term I like things that smell good they make me feel happy I yeah. get it but I just I hate when it's like disregard what your doctor tells you and yeah. just listen to what I tell you who is trying to profit off of you. Yeah. <laughs> that makes no sense. Yeah. All right, I'm going to pull up this video. And there's a lot of, a lot of stories about Scientology. There's documentaries, there's, there's, you know, just a lot of information that's going back since like the eighties. Uh, what made you become a Scientologist? Grant Cardone does not look as hyped up here as he normally does yeah he kind of looks like a normal person it's weird <laughs> right I'm like watching this and i'm like normally he looks like he's like on fire right here he just looks kind of tired i've never yeah, he looks he tired. tired before <laughs> he looks tired when i was uh, 25 years old right out of a treatment center and that book helped me understand why i was using drugs so much and actually helped me in my recovery process. Uh, then I went and did, uh, when I was 45 years old, I actually had a, an experience uh, because of a friend of mine that had been studying Scientology. He was a bond trader. 
and he was one of the most successful bond traders in the United States. And I'm like, hey, what, what, you know, what, you seem different dude, than everybody else I meet. And he's like, well, if you want to know what it is, I'll tell you. I said, well, what, what is it? He said, it's Scientology. I said, well, where is it? When is it? And, and how can I get some of it? And, uh, okay, that's a little weird. Yeah. Like the whole thing that he just, he just overcame drug addiction. And now he's like, where is this and how can I get some of it? Yeah. Well, that's like really similar to a lot of people that get involved with MLMs. Like their yeah. story is that they were at their deepest, darkest yeah. moment in life, you know, just lost their house or just got a divorce or were into drugs or something like that. And all of a sudden they found MLM and that cured them and they wanted to know more. They always target people at their most vulnerable moment. And I was, I don't know much about the Dianetics book. Like I was looking up some background information on it and it seems like, okay, I guess if you're following its advice and it helps you stay off of drugs, fine, good for you. But I don't think you need to become a paying member of the Scientology religion for that. That, yeah. and it seemed like he's just like more, he found this guy that's a bond trader and he's like, oh wow, you're so rich. How do I become so rich? It's like yeah. very clearly, and I guess, you know, every person is entitled to do what they want to with their life. If you want to prioritize being rich over being like mentally and physically healthy or whatever, I guess as a, uh, in a, in a free world, that's your prerogative. Yeah, you can do that <laughs> if you want, I guess. I just think it's bad advice to give other people. Yeah, just don't manipulate other people into having to do that. Right, right, right. That time, the only thing I had done at that time was read the book Dianetics. And I was living in San Diego at the time. He was living in Houston. Uh, I got an appointment to go to the church in San Diego. Sat, uh, went in there, asked him, hey, what do you do here exactly? Forget the media, the CNN, the tabloids. Uh, it didn't matter to me that John Travolta and Tom Cruise were Scientologists. That meant nothing to me. Like, I didn't give a shit. I'm like, all, all I wanted to know, what can you guys do for me? And the guy looked at me and says, what do you want to handle? What do you want to handle with your life? And at that time, I was 45 years old. Had, I was single. I wanted a wife. I wanted kids. That wasn't happening. I was not... I was not in a good place to, to, to be a family man. I think this is wild, too, that he's, like, attributing Scientology to having a wife and kids and everything. When, like, I did a video not that long ago where he tells the story of how he and his wife met. Yeah, and I he, saw that one. <laughs> he literally stalked her for, like, a year yeah. and a half, and she just kept saying no and ignoring him, and he was just, like, Nope, you're like a business deal. I gotta, I can't go in for yeah, the yeah. too fast. Like, what? I don't know how he's like attributing that to Scientology when basically all he did was wear down this woman until she finally said yes. I mean, well, how I is guess, that having to do with Scientology? I guess what it had to do with Scientology is I think his wife is a Scientologist also. Let me look that oh, up. okay. Because if she's also a Scientologist, like, I guess maybe she's in a similar mindset that she can, she's in the Xenu d directory, so. Uh, she must be. <laughs> she must be a Scientologist. <laughs> Scientology, like without it, you could have just met a different wife. And if Grant Cardone had not been a Scientologist, he could have also like learned to treat women better and not like a yeah. business deal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. A different wife, but I guess he's happy with his business guru wife too so yeah I just like I don't want to speculate too much but I just kind of wonder how that dynamic works because it is more seems more of a like like you said like a business deal versus an actual relationship so it's like how much are they together just because it makes their yeah. business work versus well, that's okay. I mean, Literally, I just put out a video about Rachel Hollis's divorce, which was about business guru marriages and the business of marriage and that kind of thing. So I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens with them. Yeah. But I feel like they're almost like on such a business guru level. They seem <laughs> like the type who would stay married forever, even if they hated each other, just because it, it's profitable. I have been there now for 15 years. I've done courses, books, 
uh, auditing, a thing called auditing, that has given me so much uh, peace in my life, so much more confidence. Pers okay, I was reading about auditing in Scientology. So auditing is like... Isn't it like basically where they kind of try to delve into your past memories and stuff like that? Yeah, to, yeah. You know, traumatic things have happened to you or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's where they try to, because Grant Cardone in this other interview I was watching, he was talking about how he has the reactive mind. So, like, because in Scientology, they have, like, the reactive mind, and you want to get rid of the reactive mind so that you can ascend or whatever. So, in auditing, they try to rid you of your reactive mind by, like, getting rid of all the negativity of your past or something. Which, which is just crazy. crazy. What I just, like, don't understand is that it's not just that they're trying to like work through your past trauma it's like you need to get rid of your past trauma and yeah. like ascend above that and pre basically pretend it never happened which is extremely dangerous like you're not supposed to just pretend traumatic things didn't happen to you you're supposed to work through those and learn through those situations i think it's kind of the cult thing right where it's like they want you to be fully committed to the cult to the point where like they they take you in and the person you were before Scientology doesn't matter because yeah. now you're only the person you are here because the person you are before had outside influences that might be against the religion, right. if that makes sense. Yeah, it's like completely destroying your own personality, basically. Yeah. I was watching an interview with Leah Remini, um, who used to be in Scientology. I like her because I love the show King of Queens. I'm a sitcom, basically. <laughs> and I am not... Like, I have no problem with that. So I loved King of Queens. The one, the one role that was perfect for Kevin James to play. It's like he was going to play <laughs> that role and nothing else. I've seen some King of Queens. I wasn't, like, ever super into yeah. it, but I've seen some, a little bit of it. I think it's a super funny show. I also just love sitcoms in general. Yeah, I like sitcoms, um, too. Yeah, so it's a good show. Um, but her, like, because she, like, was born, like, not born, she joined Scientology when she was a small child, though, because, like, her... Her, her parents mom, were in it. Oh, yeah, her mom got married to a guy who was a Scientologist, and he was just like, y'all are coming into Scientology with me. And then she got out of it, like, a few years ago and has now been doing all these interviews talking mm -hmm. about what it was like and how she, like, wasn't allowed to talk to certain people because certain people were, like, and influence outside of the Scientology church. I, I mean, Grant Cardone's allowed to be in whatever religion or whatever group or cult he wants to be. He's a, his own person with his own mind, but I think it's just, like, weird how much he pushes his advice onto other people, knowing it's so heavily influenced by what is basically a cult. When you look at some of the documentaries about Scientology, uh, you go to certain different levels, right? And there is a highest level that you can achieve. And the thing that I found kind of a bit strange, uh, that based on L. Ron Hubbard's writings, is that at the highest level, he reveals something called Xenu. And I'll go ahead and read this. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Xenu, dude, you, 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 you know, uh, it's all, it's all, it's ridiculous. Uh, right. It's a, uh, I'm just telling you, you want to know, you want to know, five million. You want to know from me? Yeah. Most people are having trouble with yesterday and today. So you're you're going to read off some crazy, unbelievable shit that nobody cares about because they're worried about their families today, their kids today, their bills today, and their future tomorrow. So I didn't go there to handle anything about fucking trillions of years ago. I seem like a pretty, pretty fucking uh practical guy one i do not think grant cardone seems like a practical guy no. i think he is wild like he scares me so no he's not practical well so. it's kind of interesting too because like i feel like he's just deflecting from the question like oh yeah he's he not didn't let the saying guy even xenu finish. isn't a thing yeah like he's not saying xenu isn't a thing he's just like oh well i just i don't care about that i'm just focusing on today and i yeah. think like scientology teaches their members that if they get any questions about Xenu or any of that, you know, how the universe is trillion of years old, which is, you know, not what science has to say about that. Mm -hmm. um, they are told, like, don't answer that question. 
don't, you know, respond to any questions about Xenu. So it's like obvious that he's just deflecting and yeah. you know, trying to. Yeah, because for one, he didn't even let the guy finish his question. No. It must, it seems like it was like almost like a, I'll flip a switch kind of thing. Like, oh, someone mentioned Xenu. I'm not allowed to talk about Xenu or I will get in big trouble. So let me just yeah. talk about something totally irrelevant. Right. Yeah. And they're not like taught about Xenu or, yeah, they're not taught about Xenu until you get to like the higher OT levels. So like, I don't know what OT he is, but he might have not even been taught that yet. Oh, I don't know. Grant Cardone's pretty rich. So isn't in Scientology, it's like you uh, you go up based on how much money you put into Scientology because they treat right. richer people well because they fund the whole thing. I, I like the name of this article, even though I don't think it's going to answer anything. Is there <laughs> something screwy about Scientology buffoon Grant Cardone? And that looks like a really old picture of him. Yeah. Like he looks and, young. And I am happy for him for getting off of drugs and all right. that. It's just a shame he did that by joining a cult. Yeah, or like it also could be like, all this would be speculation as well, but maybe some mental things that, mental health things that he hasn't dealt with possibly, because he does seem like to have real big extremes. And then yeah. like in this video, he seems very, he like just seems annoyed by the whole- Yeah, like, I mean, interview. even based on his own account, he seems to- have mental health things that he hasn't dealt with because even like that's like the opening to his book that I reviewed which was be obsessed or be average he's like I've had psychiatrists tell me I have ADHD and that I have OCD and he's going on I'm like well if they told you that maybe you do <laughs> like yeah <laughs> he's like no I'm just really passionate about my business and I'm like I'm passionate about my business too but I still take my medication <laughs> I care about taking care of my wife my kids, and my life. And I don't go to the media or the tabloids, and I don't fucking Google shit to find out what it is. I listened to a guy that was a very successful bond trader say, hey, man, this helped me. That's, I always find, that's, that's like MLM rhetoric right there, where they're mm -hmm. like, don't do your research on Google, do your research from me, who profits yeah. off of this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That sounds exactly the same as Don't MLMs. Google it. It's like, sure, there's going to be misinformation on the internet, but there's also going to be correct information on the internet. It's going to be hard to figure out what's what, but you have to almost take a look at all of it just to see yeah. the difference. And then you have to be critical and analytical when you read it. Yeah. I mean, um, and like, there's an overwhelming amount of evidence on, or like, just information on the internet talking about Scientology and how crazy it is. Same with MLMs, or especially now, like just because the anti-MLM movement has become as big as it is, like you can, there's so much like stories and evidence and studies that you can just find if you just do a quick Google search, but they don't want members to be doing that, you know? Right, they're like, don't look on the internet. It reminds <laughs> me of like when I was in elementary school in like, like, I don't know, 2000, 2001, like back then when Google had, was a fairly new thing and all of the teachers were like, don't trust Google, <laughs> never trust, only trust the books in the library. Google is not to be trusted. It also like reminds me kind of just from my own like Christian fundamentalist upbringing. I went to a really small fundamentalist uh, school and which was overseas. And um, bef like, I was like in my senior year, we always had like Bible classes and devotionals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And my senior year before I was moving back to the US to go to college, everything was about like making sure that when we go to a secular US and we, if we go to a secular school, making sure that if they teach you anything about evolution or any sort of science stuff, like don't listen to the teachers that are gonna be talking about evolution or science because they're wrong. So I don't know, it kind of reminds me of similar I don't know. I don't yeah. want to make it all about like atheism or anything like that, but like, yeah. it's just kind of a similar thought process where like when you're in kind of like, I, I wasn't in a cult, but like when you're kind of in that more fundamentalist mindset, it's like anyone that has any sort of evidence or scientific backing for what they're saying can't be trusted. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think it, that things become a problem when it's like, you need to not listen to any dissenting voices. Yeah. I, I don't have any problem with like 
religion in general i have so many friends and people close to me in my life who are very christian or very jewish or like you know are very passionate about their religion and their spiritual beliefs and i think that's great like that's great yeah it it only becomes a problem when people try to impose on other people to not listen to people who have a different opinion or have yeah exactly because then you, you you end up in an echo chamber and echo chambers are how cults form. So yeah. you just, you're more at risk for a cult then, I feel like. Yeah, and I'm like definitely on the same page. Like I don't have a problem with religions in general. It's just when it comes to that, like you can't talk to anyone that's outside of this group or you can't read any books unless they're like these specific books. You can't look at anything unless it's like the specific approved sources. Then that's when yeah. I have a problem. And that's, yeah, that's like what they do in the MLMs is like, don't, don't Google this. Don't, don't research this. Don't talk to other people about this. They don't know what it really is like. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) So that's, yeah. And that's what he's saying here. He's like, I don't Google stuff. I listen to this guy who's a successful bond trader. It's like, there's really more to this than like, he's a successful bond trader. He's really rich. Cool. Good for him. But I guess for someone like Grant Cardone, wealth is a measurable metric and that's the only metric he goes by. Like when I've done videos about Grant Cardone in the past, I've had people who like him who are in my comments like, okay, have fun continuing to work your nine to five job and never making an eight figure income or whatever. And I'm like, one, I don't really care about being wealthy. That's as long as I'm making enough money to cover my life. I don't need to be extremely rich. That's never been a a thing I care about. So like, if that's a priority to you, that's great. But like you saying that to me isn't going to hurt me because, okay, maybe I never will be rich like Grant Cardone, but I don't really, that's not, I'd rather be the person I am right now with less money than have his amount of money and have his mindset and outlook on the world because I don't like it at all. Yeah. And like, is that a goal that everyone should be even reaching for? Like, I think this kind of goes in with MLMs too. Like uh, the goal is to become a millionaire. Everyone wants to have that millionaire lifestyle, but no one even asks, is that something that we should even be reaching for? Like, remember, does everyone need to have if, that level of wealth? I don't know if this is still up to date um, or if this is outdated at this point, but I remember seeing a study a couple years ago that was called, like, money causes happiness up to $70,000 a year or something yeah. like that, where it's like, if you make under, or if your household makes under 70000 American dollars a year in most it, I guess that also depends on the cost of living in your region of the U.S. Right. And that kind of thing. But in a lot of places, if you make under $70,000, you will statistically be less happy because you will be constantly stressing about finances and that kind of thing. But if you, like for most people, 70000 is a good amount to cover all the baseline of everything. And then beyond that, it also depends how many kids you have. But like for yeah. the most people, like beyond that, getting super rich, getting lot more money isn't going to make you happy or you're going to be more happy from, you know, co- accomplishing other goals or from other things. Yeah. So that I found that really interesting because it's like, you know, to some extent, the whole like money doesn't cause happiness thing, you know, it's, it's, it's only true. Like for, if you're, if you're living in poverty, you're probably like it's like the high the maslow's hierarchy you know Mm -hmm, exactly cover the basic needs first so money does cause happiness to an extent when you're someone like grant cardone who has hundreds of millions of dollars like an extra hundred million dollars doesn't change your happiness either way right so yeah so he's trying to cut people off from information cool that's the bite model it's information control yeah make good decisions day to day and I'm going to tell you, I've been down there 16 years. Half the shit I've seen on the internet about Scientology, 90% of the shit I've seen on, on the internet about Scientology is complete fucking garbage. It's helped me in my life, personally. I have a beautiful marriage. He didn't even give one example of what's garbage. If he was like, for example, on the internet, they portray Scientology as doing this. But in my experience, we actually do this. Like, there was no actual example. He was just like, don't believe it. On the internet, it's it's not true. Anyway, back to how great it is. Like, that. (laughs) And that's what they do in MLMs, too. They just say, oh, none of that's true. But they don't, like, break down how it's not true. They just blanket statement, oh, it's not true. (laughs) Yeah, it's not true. Okay, well, how is it not true? Oh, it's just not. Listen to me. 
<laughs> and then a lot of times, like I've seen, like when people try to get into an argument with someone from an MLM, like if someone says like, oh, it's not true that it's a pyramid scheme. And here's why. The reason why will generally be a straw man. It won't even be the thing that the person was arguing right. against. Like they'll be like, oh, because a pyramid scheme is illegal. It's like, great. I never said your company was legal or illegal. I said that your company makes it difficult to make money. Like that's not the, yeah. you know? The law surrounding that is really weird and interesting. Like MLMs basically are legalized pyramid schemes. Just and because some something's are, legal doesn't mean you should do it. Yeah, some of them are just not illegal yet as well. Like some of them just haven't been investigated yet. Like if you look at yeah. like Advocare recently was fined $150 million by the FTC because they found that people were making more money off of recruitment and off of their downlines than they were off of selling directly to a customer. So they got fined for being a pyramid scheme. So it's like, just because you haven't been made illegal yet doesn't mean yeah. what you're doing is fully above the law. Well, have Scientologists ever made a, a documentary to respond to all that? Yeah, Scientolo it's, it's called Scientology TV. Okay. Oh man, now I'm gonna have to watch both the documentaries before and against Scientology so I can like analyze them against each other. I think that there's like a YouTube channel that's run by the Church of Scientology that's basically just like a pr propaganda machine. Oh wow. Yeah, because I, I, I've watched a couple of videos from it and it's like it's really crazy like the production value is really good like they make it look all like yeah awesome and their lighting's all good and they make it look you know some type of way but like everything they're saying is just obviously propaganda <laughs> and what i think is interesting in this i feel like in this day and age maybe not everybody but a lot of people i think are starting to have more trust in things with lower production quality because yeah. they know it's less manufactured like yeah if a current event happens I don't want to see a professional news station that I know is funded by huge corporations covering it because I know they have an incentive. I want to watch just people breaking down their opinions on things and how that experience affected their life and listening to everyday people. I think that's why YouTube's so huge for one thing. Yeah. 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 You get people just like in their house. Like right now we're just like in our houses talking about this and there are people who are interested in listening to this more so than they'd be interested in watching a professional Scientology documentary. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting point because if you think about it, like especially people that are our age, I guess millennials, yeah. they tend to watch just as much YouTube, YouTube, if not more than like actual TV. You know, so people are like, me. yeah, yeah. Like, people are less interested in seeing these actors or, like, these big production companies make something than they are just watching a random person just using their computer and a webcam to make something. Because you feel like it's more genuine. Yeah. Yeah. And I know definitely there are going to be, and I think there already have been, some corporations that have capitalized on that by being like, oh, <laughs> yeah. let's buy out some of these YouTube channels. And, like, okay, well, yeah, sure, there's an opportunity there or whatever. But I definitely think there is more credibility to, you know, production value isn't the be all end all. If you're going to watch a big budget movie, sure, that's fun. But yeah, it's not, it's not everything. Sometimes it's more fun to hear like from everyday people because yeah. you know that they're going to be more affected by things the same way you would be than like some rich person or a politician or whoever. I don't care about them. Yeah. <laughs> it's not relatable at all. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Do so you feel that Scientology is one of the keys to your success? Not, not, dude. I, I, I would give, I would give what I've done there. There's nineteen dollar course. I'm doing a finance course they have there right now. It's nineteen dollars. Uh, that when I read that that finance course on the way down to New York, by the way, it took me maybe three hours to do the whole course. You can do it online. Uh, I went to account. I spent five years to get an accounting degree. I learned more in this little course, little course pack this big, than I learned in five years of college. Okay, I hate that. That's such an MLM thing, too, when people yeah. are like, I learned more in this online course than I learned in college. I learned, like, maybe the college program you did wasn't very good. That's fine. But I feel like I hate that people do that so often. Yeah, and I feel like MLMs are kind of, like, trying to discourage people from going to college. Like, you don't yeah. need to go to college. You can just own this small business. And it's like, I feel like people, you know, if they're able to, and I hope one day everyone can afford to go to college, but if you're able to do that, then college is always something that's advantageous, even if 
you're not going to be working in the field that you got your degree in. Like for me right now, I'm got a degree in aviation and I'm not in aviation right now, but That's so cool much. You have a degree in aviation though. Yeah. <laughs> I worked in the, I worked in the aviation industry for about three years, but then Drew and I moved to Austin and I left my job there and now I'm just helping him with his YouTube videos and doing my own stuff. But like, I mean, I that's feel like, well, and that's cool that you guys are full time YouTubers. <laughs> like, that's that's pretty awesome. It's it's been really good so far. Like, and just being able to work from home and we get so much more time together. So that's been really good. But I just feel like there's so much that I took from my college degree that's still applicable today, and it doesn't have to yeah. necessarily necessarily be like related to aviation. And like, I won't say that college is for everybody because I definitely yeah. don't think it's like, I think that maybe sometimes people push it too much as the only answer, but it's yeah. definitely good for a lot of people. And it definitely like learning from a professor who has decades of experience in this field is not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I get like college isn't like, sometimes people are like, you know, I want to go into this field that requires training that you don't get in college you get it somewhere else cool like that's great do that but I think this whole like new wave of like people trying to sell online courses and saying this course that you can pay me two thousand dollars for is just as valuable as getting an education from an accredited professional like I don't think uh, there's so much of nowadays is people getting rid of the the designations that make someone a professional yeah yeah, it's just kind of like going to these like more kind of scam places. And even I found that a lot of MLMers, they'll try to get like a something that's equivalent to a, de a degree to kind of give them more legitimacy. Mm -hmm. But instead of going to an actual college, they'll go to like a diploma mill and then say that yeah. they have a college degree. Or I see a lot of, uh, I've talked to my friend Jess MUA about this because she's a professional makeup artist who got her degree in um, being an esthetician and um, th there's so many people now who do makeup artistry artistry for like unique or Mary Kay or something and the MLM will have its own like certification program within it that they created to profit off of and it's yeah. like no no and who knows if that actually meets criteria that outside yeah. like, cosmetology schools have to meet i mean I'm, I'm sure it doesn't it's just like meeting their own standards that unique create created for itself and to an extent like this is a difficult topic because it's like i have mixed feelings about this to an extent i i like the idea of a world without gatekeeping especially like as an author I and as a small business owner, I like the idea that a small business owner can start up their own business in whatever they want and do whatever they want. But I do think certain fields do need to have a license, you know, medicine, uh, things like that. And yeah. like education, do you need a license for education? I think that's a huge gray area because yeah. anyone can create a course and sell it. And maybe someone who starts up like a music teacher starting up their own studio or something even if they don't have a music education degree, like that could still be great. So it's hard to tell, but I think that a lot of times when it's like, I'm pushing this in place, like you don't need to go to college, you just need to get, you just need to take the Scientology course from within our cult, like yeah, when it gets a little weird, when there's certain things you're allowed to learn and not allowed to not allowed, learn, yeah. it gets weird. Yeah, and it's almost like that they, like demonize colleges and like make them out to be this really horrible thing mm -hmm. like if you go to college that's I think even Rachel Hollis I could, I'm, I'm not sure if I heard this in your video but didn't she like go to Harvard or she took like yeah. a Harvard business she, so yeah so she didn't when she was 18 she didn't go to college she moved to LA and got a job as an intern at Miramax so she like from the start was like, I'm not going to college. I'm going straight into my career. And then when she wanted to learn accounting, she took a Harvard accounting class online. And 
she was talking about how like she learned nothing from it which again if that class didn't work for you whatever like it's a lot of money yeah. i understand but it was like the way she talked about it was like man how stupid was i to think i should take a class at harvard it's like that doesn't sound stupid i think a lot of very smart people take classes at harvard yeah <laughs> what are you it's possible about? like that class maybe it just didn't work for her specifically but to yeah. then say that it was horrible and no one yeah. should take it is like maybe yeah. a lot of other people got something out of it not every class works for every business, right? Like I've never been to business school and like I started a business. I try yeah. to do business things like online things for free where I can. So I'm not bashing the whole online course industry. I think there's some merit to it. And you know, if you want to be a business owner, you don't necessarily have to get a master's in macroeconomics or something mm -hmm. like that. You can, you can still do things without that full thing of knowledge. But you know, when you want to learn something and you take a class in something, I think it's weird that it's like demonized like don't go to Harvard yeah. Harvard's stupid like, <laughs> obviously not stupid where yeah. are you getting that it's a very prestigious school yeah <laughs> there's a lot of very stupid. smart people at Harvard and it's like that's fine that that class didn't work for you she like eventually learned it from some someone else who knew accounting professionally so she like talked to them about it or whatever and they taught it to her cool Sometimes people learn better in one-on-one -on -one thing like that. Sometimes people don't learn as, as good in an online class. I just thought it was weird though, the way she was like, yeah, I can't believe I went to Harvard. How <laughs> stupid was I to think I could go to Harvard? <laughs> what? Yeah, that's, that's really crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird. I don't get it. Yeah, so. That's Scientology, friends. It uh, Make sure you watch um, the anti-bots video on Scientology as well. The one thing I want everyone to take away from this is just keep your critical thinking switch on, right? So if someone approaches you and says, hey, join Scientology, I'm not saying that there's nothing to gain from reading the Dianetics book. I'm not saying there's nothing to gain from it. Grant Cardone clearly got a lot out of it, but I am saying stay skeptical, stay critical. If someone ever tells you don't do research outside of this organization, if someone tells you don't Google this, don't look this up online, everyone on the internet is just spreading lies, that should set off a, a red flag for you. And if yeah. it doesn't, then reflect on whether or not you are currently living in a cult. Well, thank you so much for doing this video with me today. Thank you for having me. This was awesome.